This is Yar Weasel, and this is Choice of the Dragon by Dan the Fabulous Lich. I bet he really appreciates it when people take his name and pronounce it as the Fabulous Lich. And Adam Strong Morse. This is uh, a pet, so I have no idea, but it appears to be a choose your own adventure game of a digital style, which is interesting because interactive fiction in like the late 70s and 80s. Uh, was the computer version of, uh, of, of choose your own adventure stories, but they had a wider range of inputs. But then this, in 2010, I think this was released, has gone back to the more narrow range of inputs. So that's, that's interesting. Anyway, this is Choice of the Dragon. That's everything I know about it. I'm going to try to read this like I'm reading an audiobook. Let us begin. A knight charges up the slope at you. By the way, I'm slightly sick, so this is going to go very badly. His horse pounds at the ground, carrying the heavily armored warrior as if he were a child's doll. The knight sets his lance to attack you. How do you defend yourself, inexplicably capitalized, oh, mighty dragon? I am a mighty dragon! Take to the air with a quick beat of my wings, knock the knight from his horse... With a slap of my tail, rush into his charge and tear him to pieces with my claws. Puff of my fiery breath should be enough for him. Restore! I restore a saved game! Uh, I, that fiery breath should be quite sufficient. I don't want to do anything unnecessary. You let loose an inferno of fire. The knight's horse is cooked nicely, and your stomach lets out a deafening rumble as the smell of roast... D d d d reaches your nostrils. The knight himself staggers to his feet. His armor managed to keep him alive, but only barely. His armor should have baked him. Do you finish him off, victorious dragon? Of course, how dare he attack me? I let him live to warn others of my immense power. Eh, now that the threat is ended, he is beneath my concern. Certainly that. You leisurely eat the knight's horse. He slinks away as quietly as he can. His heavy armor makes a stealthy escape impossible. Still, you pay him no mind as he leaves. You know, it's going to get annoying to keep calling you Great and Mighty Dragon. What is your name? Gorphalon! Cephalus! Columvir! These names are all terrible! Apparently, I'm just going to uh, choose the last option every time. Oh, please forgive me. What name would you prefer? Obviously, Yaw Dragon! I am no mere Yaw Dragon. I am the king of dragons. I am, I am the Dragon King. That's me. Will you be male or female? Oh, no, no, do not pester me with- I'm just going to choose the last option every time. Obviously, Drag King is, uh, uh, unknown, undetermined. As you think about it, the knight's attack was probably inevitable. After all, you did just kidnap the princess from right out of her tower. Although, isn't it a little sexist to always kidnap a princess? Maybe, but tradition demands the dragons kidnap princesses, even if that is sexist. You dare question my actions, game? You know, I never thought about that before. In fact, I think I kidnapped a prince just to avoid being sexist. All, I've, all of you know that I make a careful point of alternating between princes and princesses, but it happened to be time for a princess. Absolutely. Of course, I'm sorry for questioning you. Anyway, as you ripped the roof off her tower, the light glistened off your... Uh, would you like to specify the color of your hide? I wasn't sure which color to put in that description. Uh, what color is my hide? Uh, I, I, I like the notion of, like, a dull brown dragon. <laughs> Are you sure? You're just, like, beige. <laughs> yes, that's me! I'm a brown dragon! Wonderful choice. So as the light glistens off your brown hide as you snatch the princess out of her tower. While we're on the subject, let's settle a few other details. How many limbs will you have, not counting your wings or tail? Now, wait. Wyverns have two, uh, dragons have four. What the hell is this five, six, and eight nonsense? <laughs> I mean, four, right? <laughs> four. Hmm. 
Is the top of your head ridged? What is this? Like Dragon Generator 2010? I don't care. I don't, what? I don't even know what this means. Okay, it's, it's, it's ridged for the princess's pleasure. I see, and your wings feathery? Why would that, what? <laughs> As you kidnap the princess, you <laughs> Specklad in chat says that five legs would just be an amputee, six-legged dragon. Well, that's true. As you kidnap the princess, you beat your scaly brown wings and flew off into the night as she clutched tightly to your ridged scalp to avoid plummeting to her doom. What are you planning on doing with the princess anyway? It's all about companionship and good conversation. People are around for a little while to lure in, more, lure in more nights, but then she's dinner. It's a little known fact that princesses taste better than most humans. It's all about ransom payments. Those are quick and easy to build a horse. So none of these are the, you know, for terrible sexual purposes option. Uh, 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 I mean... None? I, <laughs> sure. It, it's to eat her. It must be the diet. In any event, you have a delightful dinner of roast princess. This would be a good time to talk a little more about your per- This is actually Dragon Generator 2010, isn't it? How is this real? All dragons can be described in terms of a handful of characteristics, each in opposed pairs. Brutality and finesse, cunning and honor, disdain and vigilance. Are, cunning isn't the opposite of honor. Are you more notable for your brutality or your finesse? Definitely finesse. More cunning or honor? Definitely cunning. Do you disdain threats and insults that are beneath you, or are you vigilant against any slight or transgression? Uh, disdain. I, this, this, what? This doesn't even... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. I, the night, this, these are not the descriptions of the terms disdain and vigilance, but sure. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll go with that. Disdain. Now we're going to view some flash flashbacks, flashbacks to your day as a wormling. As a young hatchling, you lived with your mother in a cave up high up on a mountain. Your mother had a vast hoard of treasure and a varied hunting range. Some of your siblings chose to spend much of their time reading the rare codices and scrolls your mother had collected. Other siblings spent their time hunting the dangerous game and brawling with each other. Which pursuit did you prefer? Uh, I mean, I'm reading given that I chose finesse kind of makes more sense. Sure, why not? A wise choice that made you more cunning and taught you finesse. Well, yeah, good, because those are the things I, I chose. As you reached maturity, you began to threaten your mother's dominance over her territory. Before you could possibly have bested her in a direct confrontation, she threw you out of her lair and drove you from the lands which you grew up, leaving you to fend for yourself without any resources beyond your claws, wings, and teeth. Did you seek revenge on her by turning some of the humans in her land against her? Or did you consider petty revenge beneath you? Revenge is beneath my dignity! Disdain for petty matters is essential for- I've, I've chosen all of the things that match my stats. Uh, disdain for petty matters is essential for a dragon, as it avoids the potent- the <laughs> pointless feuds that weaken you and allow your enemies to achieve great goals. Manipulating peasants is also not the most honorable of activities of a mighty dragon such as yourself. Your wise choice increases disdain and honor. I don't think I chose honor, I chose cunning, but whatever. After several days of flight, you came across a tiny halfling traveling through the desert. Even from afar, your keen eyes detected the glint of gold and spark of magic. This halfling has some sort of magic golden shield strapped to his tiny back. You knew immediately that this treasure must be yours. The halfling was far from civilization and would almost surely die soon of thirst and starvation. For the moment, he seemed to be protected by the power of the shield. Do you kill him on the spot, ignoring his magical protection? Or did you hover nearby and wait for the halfling to die, knowing that you might lose the treasure? I killed him. It wasn't easy. The shield protected him from fire and helped him evade your attacks. Eventually, you had to swallow him whole and cough up the shield. That worked! Brutality and vigilance increased, which is bad because those are the opposite of what I chose, but whatever. One of your eld- oh my- it's just Dragon Generator Simulator 
<laughs> when does the game start? <laughs> One of your elder clutch makes was an clutch makes clutch mates was an overbearing brute named Axelmias. Axelmias loved to torment the others, always seeking to seize what did not belong to him. <laughs> I forgot I named myself Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it. it's so dumb. <laughs> okay, who relax, calm down. Just I can't say dragging, he said with a menacing grin. Give me that golden shield, or I will beat you to within an inch of your life. Uh, I evaded him and hid the shield. Cunning and finesse increase. Unfortunately, Axelmius is your elder. At this age, he has the advantage of maneuverability. He caught up to you quickly, pinning you to the ground and prying the shield out of your claws. Then he crushed the shield in his jaws, wasting the magical energies imbued within it, and spat it out at your feet. He laughed with a great roar as he flew away. What an absolute dick. Gr great I I'm, I I'm, I'm fine with these stats whatever I don't know. So think finesse cunning disdain and I guess infamy is just general good whatever. You spend several weeks winging your way across the land. Life as a traveling dragon has much to recommend it. The freedom of the air, the thrill of the hunt, and plentiful sightseeing opportunities. On one particular night, sleeping peacefully under the stars, you awake to find yourself under attack. A gigantic elder dragon tr towers before you, whipping you hard with its tail. It must be at least four times your size. Well, how dare you sleep on my lands? Hmm, okay. What do we do? Fight back. Fight back, which is unwise given all the other choices I've made. The Elder Dragon treats you with enviable disdain, capital D. It soundly beats you out of its territory. Find your own lair, it chortles. Despite the advantages, it seems that homelessness has some rather severe downsides. After all, you have nowhere to store your treasure hoard. A few days later, as you fly along, you see a large hill rising up from the land around it. Forest covers the lower slopes of the hill, giving way to grassy fields and then a rocky crag at the top of the hill. <laughs> a large cave mouth opens into the... <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so good at words! <laughs> Pro promontory, promontory. While you would have to check it out more carefully to be certain, you believe that the hill contains a fairly extensive cave complex. Plenty of game runs through the plenty of game runs through the forest, with herds of sheep and even cattle in some of the valleys a short f flight away. Looking beyond the immediate environ, several human villages and towns are well within a day's flight, offering the promise of easy pillaging to come, but none are close enough to make harassment and annoyance likely. In short, it appears to be a perfect lair. As you fly down to claim your new lair, you spot a group of small, mostly bald, orange-skinned humanoids outside the cave. They look up and point at you in terror and alarm. Some of them flee into the cave, while others bravely shake crude, ineffectual spears at you. So there are humans, but these are humanoids. Don't eat me, jabbers one of the goblins. Eat Grubch! She's got meat on him! The goblin who spoke pushes forward one of the other goblins with a butt of his spear. The other goblin, presumably Grub, drops his spear and as he shakes in front of you. How cute. What do you do? Ah, uh, slaughter them all. You pounce on them as they flee into the cave. You totally devastate them. By the time they realize that they have no prayer of victory, only two of the attackers are left alive. They flee and you enjoy a leisurely afternoon hunt. Roast Goblin makes a pleasant change from your diet of mutton. You return to your new lair confident that you taught them a lesson. A lesson in how to die. Well, perhaps not them personally, but certainly the other goblins. Brutality, whoops, and vigilance, whoops, increased. I don't seem to be doing a very good job at uh, being consistent with the stats I set out for myself. 
The cave complex within the hill is everything you hoped for. It's defensible, spacious enough for a good horde, and full of those greasy little goblins who quickly acknowledge you as their eternal sovereign and overlord. They give you the best of their treasure and the finest of their foods. Well, almost the finest. They burn the very best of their foods on a crude altar to their primitive goblin god. How do you react to that? It is good for them to serve their god as best they can. As long as they're loyal to me, I don't care if they worship a unicorn covered with polka dots. Yeah, I gotta go with that. I have to be more aloof. The offerings are inconsequential, and you can ignore them easily. By tolerating their religion, you also secure the unwa unswerving loyalty of the goblin shaman. Good job. Disdain increases. The goblins obey your every command, sometimes even anticipating your desires. If you know what I mean. They may be stupid, crude, and savage minions, but at least they're your stupid, crude, and savage minions. Life is good. For next time! Until then, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, I've got thousands more. Just click that channel button. Cheers! From Yaweasel.